A couple of weeks ago, I was lucky enough to get some free tickets to a play called Norman. It was about the filmmaker Norman McLaren, whose name wasn't familiar to me and is probably not familiar to you either. It was the astonishing images and incredible sounds that I heard that really intrigued me. Who is Norman McLaren? And as a student of film, why have I not heard of him before? Recently, I've gotten my hands on the film zone. Norman McLaren. I really wanted to find out more about Norman McLaren, but I realised I needed a bit of help, so I talked to Carl McGee, an archivist who has documented McLaren's work and life. Norman McLaren was a Stirling-born filmmaker and animator. He was born in Stirling in 1914 and went to Glasgow School of Art, where he started making films. Amy Mulligan is currently writing about Norman McLaren at the Glasgow School of Art. I thought she was perfect to tell me more about his experiences there, so I went along to the GSA. Norman McLaren started in the Glasgow School of Art in 1932. He became involved with the Glasgow School of Art Film Society and won a short film competition that John Grierson um, was judging. And then he followed Grierson to Canada where he worked at the National Film Board of Canada. Back to Carl McGee. Um, he's probably better known in Canada than he is in Scotland and he won a whole host of awards all over the world for his films including an Oscar in 1952 for his short film Neighbours. Well, if all my films had to be destroyed except one, I would choose Neighbours. Dr. Sarah Neely is an expert on experimental cinema. I hope she would be able to give me an idea as to what Grierson saw in McLaren's work. Grierson was really impressed by McLaren's use of colour. If you think about it, hand painting on film stock is a good way of producing colour films when the standard was, was black and white. One of the things I like about McLaren's work is his use of soundtrack. He would be drawing onto film stock and then occasionally make a, a, a mark off to the side which would go onto the magnetic strip so that would create the rhythm. He took abstract rectangular figures and it's actually the spaces in between those figures that he then photographs onto the soundtrack. sound I've been playing now was made by scratching marks out of a black band. I had the opportunity to talk to Don McWilliams on the line from Canada. He is a filmmaker and friend of McLaren's and was able to give me the perfect explanation to why movement, sound and colour are all so important in his work. Well, see, the thing is that he was synesthetic. It's a mental condition. So when he listened to music, he saw dancing coloured shapes in his mind. What he wanted to do in film was to put this onto film. I'd say the nearest he came to that probably was the film Synchrony. As a teenager, listening to music on the wireless, I would often close my eyes and see the music as moving and dancing shapes, forms and colours. I wondered, what experiences did he have in his life? He was, he was a person who, who had a very in, interesting life and ended up in some very interesting places. He was in the Soviet Union in the early 1930s. He went to Spain to film footage of the Spanish Civil War and he happened to find himself in China during the Communist Revolution. So McLaren seemed to spend a lot of his life abroad. Is this why he wasn't well known in Scotland? Yeah, maybe that's one of the reasons why he's not really talked about over here, because he's not... I don't know, there's nothing that particularly marks him out as being Scottish. I think he was, he was quite an internationalist, quite a cosmopolitan. So I'm getting a picture of McLaren as being a colourful character. Don was able to give me some insight into his personality. Well, he was very shy. He had a kind of quiet humour, quite humble about his work, but also very iron-willed. 
and he was very kind. He taught me an awful lot. You know, he shared what he knew very easily. So he never played the star. So McLaren didn't desire celebrity, but his art still had an impact on others. Here's Carl. He was also influ influential on, on other artists and filmmakers. I mean, there's, there's, there's well-known quotes from people like Pablo Picasso and the filmmaker Francois Truffaut saying what a great influence uh, Norman McLaren was. Now that I've reached the end of my journey, I'd like to thank my interviewees and you at home for listening. I am Vivian Kinnear and this is Amy Mulligan with the last few words. He's getting a bit of a cult following amongst musicians and people who make digital art actually are getting quite quite influenced by him. I think he's, he's one of um, Scotland's greatest exports. He sort of transcends generations and age groups and, and time. He's, he's going to become more renowned and he should be.